All right, we're doing this for technically second and a half time. I don't know, I want to say third time's the charm. I was in this exact outfit, hair, makeup, everything yesterday. I spent around one and a half to like two hours filming this entire review. You can hear in how croaky my voice is. And when I was reviewing the footage, God bless my poor heart, okay, my eyelashes were like, not even just a little bit, off the corner. It was completely falling off. I'm really excited to do this review because I have seen Drunk Elephant and I've heard the hype for over a year now and I've only like just started to dip my little fingies into it. So I hope you don't mind me. Oh, it was, oh girl, it was so bad. Okay, let's begin. All right, okay. And today I have a freaking mirror to keep myself in check, I know, oh my gosh. It's the same like eyelashes because they really don't hurt my eyes and my eyes are very sensitive. <laughs> Uh, hi! Oh my god, did I not say hi? Hi guys! So today I'm going to be doing a Drunk Elephant review. I have 9 products from their line that I'm going to review and I'm going to be very honest. I'm going to take into account like the price and everything because I do know that Drunk Elephant has a more premium price tag and I wouldn't feel comfortable like recommending something that I know is like not bad if it's off that price range. I've actually been trying all of these Drunk Elephant products for around 2 months now and I've used them like 90% of the time sometimes I would just switch it out just to try something else but in these two months I have my thoughts and I would love to share them with you these products were sent to me but they are in no way sponsored they did not tell me to make this video I did not tell them I was gonna make this video I'm just gonna be a hundred percent honest so I'm gonna make it very clear okay this video is not sponsored by drunk elephant it is in fact however sponsored by Skillshare Skillshare is an online learning community that I personally love and use all the time I've been a member for like almost a year now they have classes ranging from from productivity, fine arts, UI, UX design. I love like the drawing stuff that they have, but they also have like a bunch of like actually important things like entrepreneurship, learning how to use specific softwares, there's even stuff on cooking and languages. So you can really spend hours just learning and having fun. You can think about them as like video tutorials, but they are split up into bite size and they have quite a lot of episodes. So it's very in-depth. They have trained professionals to sort of guide you through it. And all of them are like really interesting. So I'm starting this class now called Minimal and I'm not like a minimalist girl. I mean clearly as you can tell you see from my walls but I do like the way they talk about like changing your mindset, creating safe spaces and why like less is more and I just think like in this time, in this climate like it really helps me sort of realign my goals and to see and assess like what I can declutter, what I can sort of streamline and have like a more chill first free life. Yeah, so I really like it. I've also really enjoyed like the illustration and the, the painting tutorials. Since we're all at home still and we want to create like a safe space in our home or if you want to find a new hobby or if you want to brush up on like productivity for example, then Skillshare is literally the perfect place for you. If you're interested in trying Skillshare out, I have a link down below in the description bar. The first 1,000 people to click that link will get two months free. That's 60 days of unlimited access to any of these classes across all of your like tablets, laptops, phones, etc. So I highly recommend you try it. You've got nothing to lose. And if you do decide you like it and you want to continue extending your membership after that two months, annual membership costs less than 10 USD a month. So it's really affordable. It's really fun. And I highly recommend you give it a shot if you haven't. Again, link down below. Check it out. All right, let's move on to the review. So I will be referring to my notes right here, okay? So don't mind me if I'm like reading down, okay? Because I just want to make sure that I'm giving you the exact information that Drunk Elephant is giving you. So a brief background about Drunk Elephant. It was established in 2012 by a lady called Tiffany Masterson. And she wants to revolutionize like skincare and how we approach skincare as people. So one of the things that she's really big on is that all skin is skin. She doesn't believe in like skin types. She believes there are different like skin concerns, but she doesn't believe in people having like hereditary like oily skin or dry skin and all of their products are also free of the suspicious six. So the first one is essential oils because they're sensitizing, they just add like useless fragrance. Second one, silicones, they congest the skin and they block absorption. Third, chemical sunscreens because they irritate and lead to breakouts. Four, SLS or sodium laurel sulfate. This is a harsh cleansing agent and it strips skin of your protective barrier. Number five, fragrance or dyes because they're useless or harmful. And number six, dry 
buying alcohols because they aren't drying and sensitizing and my doggy is here. Excuse me, this is a sofa that's not much space to roam, you know. So this is Drunk Elephant's philosophy and how they approach skincare and I don't want to say that I agree with this statement like 100% because like the all skin is skin. I I don't know about that. But I do like the fact that they remove the suspicious six. There are some products that are like definitely, I know for myself as well, bad and useless and just harmful for the skin. So I like that all of these products are sort of taken out. So I'm going to start from the start of the skincare routine, which is the cleanser. So this is the best number nine jelly cleanser. Oh my god, I love the packaging. Can I just say, I'm sorry, everybody loves the packaging and it's really for a good reason. I'll get more into it like later, but over here it gives you the main sort of ingredients used in the formulation of the product. So this is mainly formulated with cantaloupe and glycerin. I also got screenshots from the Sephora Singapore site. So it has 119 reviews with an average of about 4.5 stars. This is 150 ml and this retails for $46. An innovative jelly cleanser that removes all traces of makeup, excess oil, pollution and any other grime from the day. This gentle formula features a unique blend of mild surfactants and makeup dissolving emollients to rinse away impurities and leave your skin feeling clean and soft. Free of SLS, fragrance, essential oils, or suspicious six, this unique cleanser is non-irritating, non-sensitizing and appropriate for all skin. This has a pH level of 5.5 which is dope, it's the exact same pH level as our skin and it's also cruelty free. I think all of their products are cruelty free, some of them are vegan so if they're vegan I'll sort of shout them out. The ingredients list is actually pretty short. The main thing is glycerin and then there are some mild surfactants and some linoleic and linolenic acid which is quite a mild acid that still sort of keeps the moisture in your skin. So I have some mixed feelings about this cleanser and I will tell you why. The good bits about this, I really like that it's very mild but it still gives you a cleansing feel. I'm directly comparing this to other mild cleansers that I've had in the past like the CeraVe one and the Cetaphil one and the thing that I notice about those is that they don't leather up and they don't feel like you're cleansing your skin. Sometimes with those cleansers I have to double cleanse even after the makeup remover part which is like triple cleanse right because I just don't know if it's clean and to be very honest like I use a separate makeup remover to remove my makeup before I get into this so I can't exactly say for sure how it does with makeup but when I do cleanse my skin with this when I tone after I don't see any traces of like makeup or foundation or anything like that so it is very fast free and you don't have to use a lot but also on the other hand I'm like looking at it I'm like sis this is nearly 50 bucks for cleanser 150 ml, like I've used it for two months, not every day, like definitely not every day, and I have around this much left. And glycerin is a very common ingredient that's not at all expensive, it's actually very affordable. So I wouldn't be confident in saying that this cleanser is so good and so mind-blowing that you need to pay so much more as compared to like CeraVe or Cetaphil or any other mild cleanser. Um, I just don't know. I think if you have super oily skin, this is probably good to try because I think this can do something that um, like the CeraVe or the Cetaphil ones can't do in the way that it leather up and gets rid of oil but if you have normal dry sensitive skin I think if you want to try a mild cleanser you can sort of give the Cetaphil or CeraVe one a try. I mean yeah to be fair like their packaging is not as cute they're like pharmaceutical like derma brands right and they come in like a big little tub but they are very cost effective and they are very very good. I don't know, I don't know how to feel about this. If this was maybe like $30, I would highly recommend it to everyone. But the fact that this is like 46 and it's not a lot, it's 150 I, I just don't know. So I like it but I think it's a little expensive. Alright, moving on to the eye cream. This is the Sea Tango Multivitamin Eye Cream. And the main ingredients here are Power 5C and 8 Peptides Blend. So I'm gonna read what it says. This is a rich and restorative cream for firmer, stronger looking skin around the eye area. So there is a blend of potent antioxidants, replenishing ceramides, plant oils and soothing actives, all designed to refresh and restore a radiant appearance. Gentle enough for morning and evening use, yet powerful enough to improve even the most stubborn signs of aging. This unique cream contains a brightening combination of 8 peptides, 5 forms of vitamin C, Oh, Power 5C and cucumber extract to leave your skin looking youthful and radiant. This is also cruelty free, it's not vegan and the one thing that I noticed after water and glycerin, there's 
dicaparyl carbonate, which I don't know what that is, and something called sacharyl alcohol. And I was initially concerned. I was like, why is alcohol so high up on the ingredients list? so close to my eyes, right? But I actually did some research, so this is not the same as like common alcohols. So if you notice just now when I said the suspicious six, the sixth one was drying alcohol, it's not a drying alcohol. So satyril is actually an emollient fatty alcohol and it's not the same. It's very common in skincare and it helps like moisturize and you know, emulsify. Uh, the creams and stuff, so that's okay. There are a lot of seed oils and as you notice as I go down the line There will be a lot of these like repeated seed oils. There's also Camellia sinensis leaf extract, which is great for calming There's panthenol and pretty far down the line. I noticed that there's mica and I don't know if you know you guys are familiar with this, but mica is basically a mineral that is present in a lot of eyeshadows and a lot of setting powders. It causes like a nice like silvery like brightening um, effect and there have been a lot of discussion about like the farming of mica and it's just a little sketchy on the ethical line. If this is cruelty free, it's probably sourced ethically, but I just don't know how I feel about mica being present in my eye creams because this is skincare, it's not makeup, it's meant to sink in so close around my eyes. It does give an appearance of a brighter look. It doesn't actually help the skin and the dark eye circles, do you know what I mean? So uh, it was a little sneaky. I thought it was a little sneaky that was in there. The ingredient list is very very long and mica is towards the bottom so I really think it's quite a minuscule amount but I just thought that was quite interesting to note. So like I said earlier, since I've been trying all of these products out for two months, I have been switching out like some serums sometimes, etc. But I've not switched out my eye cream at all. I have been consistently using it every morning, every night for two months. I still got some product left. And I want to say it's a little bit more thick. It's definitely a cream type. It's very harmonious with the moisturizer. Like I said, a lot of the main like seed oils, fruit extracts, root extracts are very similar like across everything in the line. So the products sort of reinforce each other which is quite nice. I find that this is quite blendable. I don't feel like it's too heavy on my eyes even though it's more of a cream than like a gel or water base. And I do feel like it keeps my under eyes hydrated. I just don't know if it reduces the signs of aging, that's for one, because I don't really have like fine lines to track. But the other thing is I don't know if it's that brightening actually. The five types of vitamin C, I honestly can't tell a difference but I really like the fact that there are ceramides and there are like nice seed oils and extracts infused into it. This is a rich formula so I would recommend this to people with dry skin or like aging skin but I still don't feel like it really did anything to my very mild case of like dark eye circles. So yeah, this is actually... This retails for $90 and it's 15 milliliters. But usually eye creams are a little bit more expensive because they are just so packed with like antioxidants and nutrients and they have to synthesize everything in like a neat little formula and it has to be suitable around the eye area which means that a lot more testing is required. And on top of like just safety in general, eye creams also have to go through a lot more formulation to make sure that it's not too too rich on this part of your eyes because that's where your skin is the thinnest and if it does clog or if it's too rich or if it's too much, you'll grow like milia which is like little protein buildup which is not cute. I understand the price of this eye cream, I just don't know if this eye cream is like the best in the market. In my stash right now I have a couple more eye creams that are comparable in price, maybe like two third or half of the price that can do as good of a job as this. So yeah, I would say I probably wouldn't repurchase this. So usually after I cleanse, I tone, I put eye cream and then I get into my serums. I consider this a serum even though it says here that this is the A. Passioni retinol cream. Retinol in my experience usually targets like signs of aging. It also does a pretty good job of like clearing skin. So Accutane is actually a derivative of vitamin A. It's a retinoid but this cream in particular doesn't target acne. It targets fine lines, wrinkles, signs of aging etc. So it says on the site that this is a clean cutting edge formula that combines 1% vegan retinol with nourishing superfood rich ingredients to dramatically diminish the appearance of fine lines, sun damage, and deep wrinkles, revealing a vibrant, younger looking complexion. So in here, I see retinol, I see supportive peptides, I see vitamin F, I see comforting passion fruit, apricot, marula, and jojoba oils, and I also see antioxidants like kale, winter cherry, and xanthophilus. Xanthophilus. 
sees, I don't know. And when you purchase this in the box, it also comes with three milliliters of this particular serum that I will get into in a bit. That's actually the Hydra Serum. So looking at the ingredients, I see glycerin again, I see stearic acid, I see coconut alkanes, I see niacinamide pretty high up on the list. Niacinamide helps with like the recovery of skin. So if you actually do have like acne scars, pigmentation, I think that's why they also said like sun damage and stuff. It really helps like resurface your skin and add a lot of like brightness. So there's actually more niacinamide than retinol in it. But to be fair, 1% retinol is very standard. You know, other retinol creams don't usually add more than 1 or 2% if it's like extra stable because retinol by itself is just an unstable ingredient. So there's also linoleic acid, linolenic acid, ceramide, and there's just a bunch of other stuff that us sis I really don't know. As a general guideline, when it comes to serums and actives, you don't want to not know what you're pairing it with because you don't want these ingredients to clash. So what you can pair this with is with hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is actually just a moisturizing like agent. It's not really an acid in the same way that you think about AHAs or BHAs, that kind of like chemical exfoliant acids. Niacinamide is also really great. They already have quite a good amount of niacinamide. So if you have like a niacinamide serum, like only niacinamide, you can layer it on. Ceramides also go great with this because ceramide is a natural like moisturizing agent. It's so good. My skin drinks ceramide. It's so good. And also aids in a calming and a recovery of skin. Retinol is a peeling agent, right? So you want to make sure that you have like tools to help your skin like recover and moisturize and bounce back. Guys, don't use retinol in the day. It's never a good idea. It leaves your skin photosensitive. So the next morning, I do highly encourage you to put on some sunscreen just to make sure that your skin isn't gonna burn. What you don't want to pair this with is with vitamin C. So vitamin A, this is vitamin A retinol, right? Vitamin C, uh-uh, ack. No, not good. And you also don't want to mix this in with any of the AHAs, BHAs, or PHAs. So these are chemical exfoliants, alpha hydroxy acid, beta hydroxy acid, and I want to say poly hydroxy acid. I might be wrong, but just don't. Don't do it because this isn't a chemical exfoliant. First of all, you don't want to layer chemical exfoliants on top of chemical exfoliants. That's just overkill. But like I said, this is a peeling agent. So if you put a peeling agent with a chemical exfoliant, it's gonna be a shit show. The peeling agent just stimulates cellular turnover and it'll do it in its own time and still pretty harsh on its own. So just take care when it comes to stuff like this. You can add in plant extracts, you can add in Sika, you can add in Camellia, you know? Stuff that's calming, that's relaxing, you know, that's not too tough on your skin. Do not apply this where you apply pimple cream like benzoyl peroxide, that's not a good idea. And I would actually say I use this maybe once a week. I also personally would recommend you start with once a week, work your way up, but don't exceed like three times a week just because it's a peeling agent. Like you don't want to over exacerbate or irritate your skin. You can use this as a spot treatment around your smile lines, anywhere where you feel needs the extra help. Sometimes I do use this all over my face as a serum and I think it's okay. I've tried it on acne. I don't think it did anything like miraculous, but I also don't have any fine lines to like really track how well it's doing. So I wouldn't say this is something I would necessarily pick up, you know, because it was sent to me, I tried it out. I don't feel any sensitizing effects at all. So if you have sensitive skin and you're worried about this, I would say don't worry because I have sensitive skin and it doesn't affect me. But yeah, unfortunately, I can't give like a super fair review. So on the side, this has nice. 92 reviews with an average of 4.5 and this is 30 milliliters and retails for $105. It is a little steep but this is retinol plus a bunch of like superfood rich ingredients, right? So sorry if you feel like I gave a very useless review. I'm just giving you the info on it because I really, I can't tell. You know how some things that you just apply and you're like, okay, yeah. I think I won't miss it if I ever like stopped using it but I will still continue to try it out. And, and see if there's any difference. Also because I can't apply it every day, so. This is the other thing that I've been using on my face at night. This is the TLC Framboose Glycolic Night Serum. And this has an AHA BHA blend with raspberry extract. And I have so many things to say about this because it's, it's really unique. It's a very unique product. So I need to explain what AHA and BHAs are in case you don't know. So AHA stands for alpha hydroxy acid and BHA stands for beta hydroxy acids. These are chemical exfoliants and these are the antithesis to like 
physical exfoliant so like scrubs and stuff they physically have beads that sort of exfoliate your skin but this basically is a chemical exfoliant meaning that these are very mild acids that you apply straight to your face so AHAs and BHAs target different layers of the skin AHA targets like the outer epidermal layer right on the top of the skin where your skin cells have like the dead skin cells and the cellular turnover and it's like still sort of attached together so when you apply AHAs it will literally detach and dissolve the glue that's binding the dead skin cells to your new skin cells and therefore leave your face very glowy, very fresh. It's a new, fresh layer of skin. BHAs, on the other hand, actually penetrate deeper into your skin and unclogs pores. It dissolves like the glue and the gunk on the inside. So that's actually really good for people who are acne prone, people who get congested skin, that sort of concern. So AHAs and BHAs can be used in conjunction, but usually no one encourages people to put them both together unless it's really mild, like a toner, that sort of thing. And even then you shouldn't be using it every single day because like I said, it's a chemical exfoliant. Like your skin doesn't turn over that fast for you to keep on exfoliating and always get like new and like ready skin. So I find it very interesting that this is a serum which is usually the highest in terms of like potency for active ingredients in a blend in both AHAs and BHAs because sometimes they can be a little too sensitizing. Imagine having something that attacks the inner and the outer layer at once. So keep in mind that my first impression of this was whoa really? I was intimidated, I didn't know if it was going to irritate or harm my skin, but I was still interested to try it out. So let me go on with what they promise. Formulated with a unique AHA-BHA blend including glycolic, lactic, tartaric, citric and salicylic acids. So glycolic and lactic I think are AHAs and salicylic and citric I think are BHAs. Not super sure, but you can fact check me on that. And blended with raspberry extract, it sinks in easily and delivers the results of a chemical exfoliation without harsh side effects like dryness or sensitization. Horse chestnut, bearberry and white tea help to calm and soothe the skin and fine lines, wrinkles, discoloration, excess oiliness, broken capillaries and the appearance of pores will appear dramatically diminished. That is a huge claim and it's not even done yet. This brightening serum also enhances the performance of other products by clearing the way for maximum absorption. So I find it interesting that it's not only blended with AHAs and BHAs but also with a ton of other ingredients to help calm the skin, help you know bolster I think the acids and also to help brighten the skin. And I find that the texture is definitely more on the watery side of like normal serums because sometimes they can seem a little bit more gel-like right. This is definitely less viscous so I I find that it's very interesting that they did say that this is formulated for maximum absorption. It does absorb really really fast and this also has a pH level of 3.8 so considering that our skin is you know on a 5.5 I think this is actually pretty okay and I have to say that this is definitely a very unique formulation. I don't see really any other like skincare company come up with an AHA BHA blend serum like it's very potent it's very strong and the ingredients are very high up the list like the acids so they're really not shying away from the fact that this is a chemical exfoliating serum on days where I feel like I have breakouts and I have like broken capillaries or like broken exposed skin it does sting my face especially along this line so the thing is this part of my skin never gets breakouts it never gets like broken but because it's a little bit more thin a little bit more sensitive it does sting it doesn't hurt so so much that I have to take it off but I almost immediately have to go in with the moisturizer that I'll show in a bit that I love so some days I just have to use it as a spot treatment but it's very effective it really helps with the glow it really helps with the texture of your skin AJs and BHAs are something that I've incorporated like into my skincare routine but only sort of as a toner or separately as serums like just salicylic acid or just like lactic acid and even then I'm like a little cautious just because my skin is sensitive lah. So I find it like very interesting and I'm very impressed and I want to say on my skin even though it does sting it doesn't cause any redness it doesn't cause any inflammation at all like it's just a stinging 
sensation for like a few seconds until I put my moisturizer on so that's something to note I do feel like it does a lot for the glow and it has to the second most ingredient is glycolic acid which is an AHA so it definitely helps with the glow it helps with the resurfacing of your skin like in the morning you can tell that like, it gives you a nice fresh like glowy look it also at the same time because it has BHAs it decongests your pores and it also um, prevents like future breakouts so I think this is actually really suitable for people like my age especially if you're acne prone um, if you don't have too sensitive skin I would recommend you try it I started out by using this once a week and then I worked my way up to twice a week and then now I'm at three times a week but one of those three times I only use it as a spot treatment I only use it around this jaw mouth area because this is where I get a lot of my acne scars and I just want it to go away and I always layer this with like moisturizing serums moisturizing moisturizers and stuff like that and that's really the way to go when you want to have like chemical exfoliants in your routine you always want to top it up with moisturizing factors you want to give it that hydration you want to give it something to bolster your skin and really help like with the recovery and the rejuvenation and you also for sure 100 percent want to add spf the next day do not use this in the day again wow it's a chemical exfoliant you are literally stripping away your skin you have to use sun protection and you really don't want to use this in the day when you're exposed to sunlight because it'll cause a lot of redness a lot of rawness and it's just not a fun time the other thing you don't want to use this with like i said is retinol and also vitamin c chemical exfoliants vitamin c ooh, no 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 just not a fun time, just don't do it. The main derivative of vitamin C is L-ascorbic acid. It is an acid and it is by itself already a little bit unstable. So when you mix it in with other AHAs, BHAs, other acids, it's gonna make it even more acidic. It's gonna harm and irritate your skin and it's gonna render both of these ingredients useless. So don't do that. So I have the smaller size, which is 30 milliliters, and this retails for $128. And that's steep but I can understand where the price comes from. I think it's a really unique formulation and I think it is definitely like something that you want to pay more for, for all of the calming superfood ingredients, extracts and all that kind of thing with the AHAs and BHAs. So I would say that if you want a splurge, if you want a good chemical exfoliant, I would say it's worth the splurge, but if you can't afford it, don't worry. You can always look for glycolic acid serums, lactic acid serums, or salicylic acid serums and apply them like separately at night. But please do not try to mix them together. That's just... That's just... Ugh, don't do that, okay? Alright, moving on to the serum that I do use in the day. This is the C Firma Day Serum and this is a vitamin C serum. This contains 15% L-ascorbic acid, which is like I said, the main derivative of vitamin C. And it also has pumpkin ferment extract. So, um, I have a lot of things to say about this. None of them good. Sorry, spoiler alert, I don't like this. <laughs> So this is supposed to be a potent vitamin C day serum that firms and brightens your skin. 15% L-ascorbic acid is nothing new. Um, the Claire's like a vitamin serum, that one has 5%. A lot of other companies have 10 to 15%. And the only other like serum concentrate that I've seen that's a bit more than that is the Polish Choice, like 25%. But that one comes in a very, very small tube and you're supposed to use it as like spot treatment. So in the morning, when you want to put on your vitamin C, you can pair this with hyaluronic acid. Like I said, that's not really an acid. It's more of like a moisturizing, hydrating agent. And you can also pair this with any other antioxidants. And definitely, still, put on sunscreen. All the time, every morning, just put on sunscreen. But what you don't want to do is to pair this with niacinamide because while they are both antioxidants, they actually counteract each other and they diminish each other's effects and they render each other useless. So unless you want to wait 10 minutes and then layer it on separately from each other, but I just feel like that's... Just put niacinamide at night, it's fine. Niacinamide doesn't really clash with anything else other than like vitamin C and it doesn't irritate your skin. So if you've been doing it so far, like don't worry, it just diminishes like the effectiveness of vitamin C or niacinamide when you apply them together. And of course, friendly reminder, you don't want to put it with retinols or AHAs, BHAs, chemical exfoliants, etc. So it says here that this revolutionary serum contains a potent antioxidant complex of 15% L-ascorbic acid, 0.5% ferulic acid, and 1% vitamin E. So vitamin E and vitamin C actually go really well together. So if you have any other like vitamin E based products, you can also use it in the day with your vitamin C. It also has other formula supportive enzymes and antioxidants to neutralize pollution, environmental stresses, and the damaging effects of free radicals. So 
the other supportive enzymes and antioxidants they're talking about actually are the same ones that are used in all of the other serums, all of the other products in general. That is nothing new. Once again, this is not a bad thing because when you use everything from the same line, they reinforce each other, they don't clash. They're just very harmonious together. But on the flip side, if you want to rotate your ingredients, you want to like, you know, give your skin a variety of nutrients, this serum would not be as productive, especially because I feel like in the day, you have the chance to use like other stuff from the stuff that you use usually at night. This also has pumpkin ferment extract and pomegranate enzyme. It also says that this is a hydrating serum. It replenishes the lipids and visibly reduces the appearance of dark spots and wrinkles. The result is a noticeably diminished appearance of photo damage replaced by radiance and luminosity. So vitamin C does very well to brighten my skin. And I can really tell when vitamin C like works on my face. And I have to say that I really don't think this does like that much like compared to my other vitamin c serums just a quick little side note before i continue bashing on this product like the packaging is so good first of all it's so cute it's such a nice user experience it's quirky it's unique and it also keeps your product fresh it keeps your products like covered you know you're not exposing it to air you're not exposing it to germs bacteria they last a long time it's opaque it's also not exposed to sunlight as long as you don't put it like under any extra like unnecessary heat it should be okay and so that's exactly what i've been doing with this product i've put this away from the sun it's opaque it's airtight i mean it's not like tight tight but it's covered so i don't understand why this is just so dark in color i don't know if you can see I don't think it was that yellow or like that orangey when I first got it. I think it was a lighter orange, but it really got a lot darker as I continued using it. And a changing of color when it looks like this is usually a sign of oxidation. When vitamin C oxidizes, it means that it's useless. Like it doesn't work anymore because it's not stable in itself as a formula. And then when it moves, it's no longer as potent as it used to be. Not only is it less potent, and uh, it's oxidized already. First of all, it sort of tints your skin a sort of orangey, caramelly color. It smells a little funky. I know that they don't add extra fragrances or like dyes, which is great, but at the same time, like I don't want it to tint my skin. Like if I'm applying any sort of like makeup or even if I'm not, that's just sort of a light, like orangey tint. And it's just kind of strange. And after I use it, it leaves both a tacky and a greasy residue, which is like pick one, you know, like choose your battles. Like don't give me both greasy and tacky. It's just a very, very disappointing product. And I really had so much like high hopes for it. Vitamin C serums are notorious for being unstable because L-ascorbic acid by itself, the most pure and common derivative of vitamin C, is very unstable as a compound. It has to be in a good solvent or in a good way where it doesn't oxidize very fast. Some companies like to put silicones with their vitamin C. Some people like to put um, different kinds of solvents. Some people find other derivatives of vitamin C. So if you've watched my previous review on The Ordinary, there's also a cream formula, the MAP, which is another form of vitamin C, like another derivative. And that one is made in that way with that derivative because that's more stable and even then it's sort of slowly oxidized but oxidized over like a year and i love that cream like so much so l-ascorbic acid is known to be unstable it's known to be difficult to formulate without it oxidizing so fast so i know that this says day serum but you don't actually just have to use it in a day the reason why they do recommend you using it in the day is because there are other things that are only available to use at night and at the same time vitamin c is not photoreactive to sunlight so you can also apply it without fearing that it might change on your skin or it might do something or it might be rendered useless. So I do recommend you use vitamin C in the day. I just don't recommend you using this particular serum just because I just, I don't think it works. It's not a fun time with this. I don't know if you can see the bottle, but it's like already slightly stained and I cannot remove it for the life of me. It's not like I'm trying to make this look bad on purpose. And uh, yesterday's video, there was actually a bunch of gunk forming around here and it's just too watery, it's sticky, it's tacky, it's greasy. It clocks a very sleek packaging, which I thought was not possible. And the second thing that I really don't like about this is the price. This for 30ml is $114. That's really expensive. This, in my very humble opinion, is not something that is cutting edge in formula. It's not revolutionary. L-ascorbic acid is a very common ingredient. 
15% is a very common amount. You know, you can find alternatives for this like literally one tenth of the price. So I uh, would not recommend this at all. This is my least favorite product of the line. All right, the next product I want to talk about is the B Hydra Intensive Hydration Serum. It's the big bottle with the same cap. Oh, I love it. Oh, damn. I can't believe I didn't mention it up until like the previous product. So this has primarily pro-vitamin B5, which is pentanol, I think, pentathonic acid, and pineapple ceramide. This is an ultra-hydrating vitamin B5 gel that replenishes nutrients to improve your skin tone and texture. So this is a very lightweight serum. It's uniquely formulated with pro-vitamin B5 and pineapple ceramide to attract and hold moisture to your skin. So ceramides kind of do that. Like ceramides are one third of like the building blocks of your skin. They sort of like bind together and attract a lot more moisture and they just like do a lot for your skin. I love ceramides. I think it is my favorite skincare ingredient like out of everything out there. Like I have to have something with ceramides in them. This also has a watermelon rind, apple and lentil complex to provide 24 hour continuous hydration, barberry extract to soothe your dry skin and sodium hyaluronic cross polymer to protect against free radicals. The thing that I noticed about the Drunk Elephant line is that even though they look so like millennially and like fun and it looks like it's targeted towards people in my age range like mid 20s to maybe like early 30s their products actually talk a lot about like anti-aging and they're targeted towards like fine lines and wrinkles this is something that i really didn't notice until i started doing my research so i thought it was like quite interesting to note and it says here that this biocompatible formula easily penetrates any skin type without disrupting its balance that one i have to agree this is like a everyone can use kind of serum it's just simply for hydration and for like nutrients and looking at the ingredients i see water i see coconut alkanes this is something that was kind of repeated throughout. Glycerin, the same seed oil. This has been present in almost every single product. Scleral, scleral, sclerocaria birria seed oil. There are amino acids like the pineapple fruit extract, there are different root extracts, watermelon, lentil, apple, there's pentanol which I think is the vitamin B5 and there's also citric acid quite low on the list. This actually has a pH level of 6.6 .6, which is interesting, it's more on like the alkaline like basic side. So I don't know the main difference between like pentanol which is vitamin B5 and niacinamide which is vitamin B6 but I will list like some info here just so that you can get a rough idea and I want to say that this is truly like a good everyone can try it serum regardless of your skin concern because it's a very light hydrating serum so this retails for $68 and it's actually a 50 milliliter bottle so I feel like it's actually worth the price and I like that there are ceramides in here I like that there's vitamin B5 primarily the best thing about this is that you can truly add this to anything so for example if you have the TLC Framboose it comes with 3ml of this serum right it's because these can be paired together to lessen the acidic like effects of the serum if you find that something like the night serum this glycolic night serum is a little bit too harsh you can always add a shot of this right after and it will soothe it right out before you even put in like any other moisturizer if you want to mix this in with your moisturizer, you can also do that. Like, this is just a really good mixer. So, I really like it. I use this a lot, a lot. And I don't know if I can truly say that you absolutely need this. So, I would say if you don't have the budget for this, I don't think you have to scramble and try and look for it. I don't think it is a miraculous product or game changer. I don't even know if it really does much for unevening of like fine lines and stuff again because i don't have fine lines to test out but also because these ingredients are mostly based on like hydrating so it does help in improving like the overall complexion but i don't think it's targeted to be miraculous in like every single concern so yeah those are my thoughts on this <laughs> noodles nose this is my favorite product okay the next product i'm very excited to talk about it is my favorite. This is the Lala Retro Whipped Cream. Look at it. Look at it. Wow, wow. Okay, I have so many things to say about this because I truly love this so much. It is 
the best. This has six rare African oils and ceramides. Ooh, ceramides. Love a ceramide. Before I get into the actual product, I just want to give a huge shout out again to the packaging. I know that people can say like, okay, the packaging is cute, it's pretty, and it really is. But I also really like how thoughtful the packaging is for the best like user experience and for especially like my particular skin concerns because I don't like moisturizers in tubs. I don't like stinking my fingers in. I don't like having to use a little spatula and then cleaning the spatula and then cleaning my hands that touch the spatula and touching the product. And it's just like a mess. And so I really love the way that they structured like the packaging around this moisturizer. It is the best. It keeps the product sealed. It keeps it fresh. It keeps it like not exposed to germs, bacteria, air, your fingers, anything like that. And it just gives you like a nice little surface for you to press down and you get the exact amount that you need. So you can control how much you press. You can do like a half press if you find that one full press doesn't give you enough moisturizer. The amount that I squeeze from one full squeeze is the exact amount that I use for my entire face and some of my neck as well. So I really love the packaging. I think they did such a great job. So of all of the Drunk Elephant products, the only things that I didn't switch out at all throughout this entire like two months of testing it out are the eye cream and the moisturizer. But I want to say that I would not be switching out my moisturizer even after like doing this review because I just love it so much. This is an award-winning formula, okay, rightfully so, to reinforce the skin's mantle, defend against effects of everyday stresses, maintain skin's moisture balance, and protect against water loss. This is infused with six rare African oils and plant ceramide complex with sodium hyaluronic cross polymer which is something that we've already talked about and it also has fermented green tea which is an antioxidant to help combat signs of aging. So it's loaded with omega acids and Lala in itself helps skin retain the moisture and forms a protective layer so that's long lasting and allows the skin to function at its optimal level. For this product in particular, it doesn't say that this is cruelty free or vegan, so I'm assuming it's neither because they usually do say it. Going down the ingredients list, the second most present ingredient after water is glycerin, and glycerin is a humectant. So what it does is it attracts moisture and it pulls moisture towards the top part of your skin and it sort of keeps it there like a protective barrier. They do have camellia sinensis seed oil, which again is a really good calming agent. They also have yeast, malt extract, soybean extract, satira alcohol, a bunch of ceramides, and I just love it so much it's so good the way that this is formulated is just so incredible to me because i know a lot of the ceramide based like moisturizers i have tend to be very heavy and very thick and difficult to blend and i also can't use those in the day because they're too heavy they're too thick and they sort of clog my pores and make my pores look really oily and this whipped cream in particular the way it's formulated because it's a little bit lighter and airier but it's still so rich in like ceramides and all of these like super ingredients and nutrients and stuff right i get the same kind Kind of effect that I get from like ceramides based like heavier creams in the day. Like I'm using it right now, I don't think I'm very shiny. I actually didn't powder anything except for like my forehead right here because you know I don't want to like bing. It's great on my dry patches, it's great on my t-zone like my oilier areas and I do tend to get oily throughout the day. It just works really truly again one of the products in the line that just works for every single skin type and it's just so good and it's also so versatile so if you want to add like the bee hydra serum a shot of this mix it together form your little cocktail for like extra hydration they do recommend it at the same time if you want to add in like a few drops of like facial oil this is the marula oil that i'll talk about in a bit you can also do that and it's just so harmonious like the way it's formulated mixes so well with the other products and it sinks into your skin so nicely. It really does form a protective barrier so your skin doesn't dry out. It doesn't feel like you didn't moisturize your skin like in an hour or so. And the next morning, like your skin is just beautiful and I love it. It's the best. The only problem that I've encountered with this is that sometimes, very rarely, I would say like 5% of the time when I squeeze, it'll be like like a little fart instead of like the product coming out and it, you just have to press one more time like it's not a big deal but also at the same time it reminds me like because i like it so much right i'm like oh my god please don't run out so i can't tell when it's actually gonna run out and i think because of the spring it's like naturally a bit heavier so i would love if there was like a small little clear indication here for me to see if i'm running low on something or maybe just the spring isn't like attracting all of the product there's like stuff left in there because i want to use like every last drop of this it's so 
good. That's my only gripe with this product and it's not even that big of an issue because right now I'm just like happily like using it, right? And after every time I use this, I just wipe down the surface and it's clean again and I cap it on and it's the best. This is something that I would definitely repurchase after I finish using it and I cannot recommend it more. So this comes in a 50 milliliters tub and this retails for $86 which I feel is pretty alright. For what it does, for the formulation, for how my skin feels afterwards, I think it's worth it. Also because like all the other good like ceramide moisturizers are usually like $40, $50 anyway. So I think it's quite reasonable paying a little bit more for like the added benefit of wearing it in the day and having my skin like always so jolting and supple. I love it. I think it's worth it. Yeah, I like it. Alright, the next product I want to talk about is the F-Balm Electrolyte Water Facial. So this is essentially a sleeping mask, you know? After your moisturizer, you want to add like the extra zhuzh and you want to really hydrate and moisturize your skin. This has vitamin F microbeads and also sodium PCA. So let me read what the site says. This is a cooling, hydrating overnight mask that plumps and restores with an electrolyte cocktail while strengthening the skin's acid mantle. Wow! So it has niacinamide, sodium PCA, plant squalane, five types of ceramide, yes omega fatty acids, and powerful antioxidants. It's supposed to rehydrate hungover, overly parched skin, making it soft and supple. There are also tiny vitamin F beads in here that burst during application to deliver extra emollient and soothing hydration. So that's actually pretty interesting. So I don't know any sleeping mask that actually has like bursting beads. I know usually it's like serums and stuff. I do like that Drunk Elephant has a more like cheeky approach and they try to like reformulate and come up with things that are not really in the market yet. So I really appreciate that. It also comes with three milliliters of this night serum. So I think these two, they're trying to tell you, pairs really well. And I can see that this makes sense because like I said, when you want something like a chemical exfoliant, you really want to hydrate the shit out of your skin. So going down the ingredients list, after water we have squalane, propanadiol, niacinamide, olive oil glycerath, 8 esters, coconut alkanes, um, coconut water, wow, jojoba seed oil, glycerin, and a bunch of the other seed oils and superfood rich ingredients that we've already seen. They also have a bunch of ceramides, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 types of ceramides. Squalane is actually a plant-derived natural antioxidant. It's an emollient. It's meant to soothe and hydrate and really plump up your skin. It's highly effective in reducing wrinkles, scars, UV damage, pigmentation. It also helps with hydrating, soothing, and it's suitable for all skin types. The squalane is actually quite a common ingredient in a lot of skincare products, especially in the Drunk Elephant line, but also beyond it. So I'm quite familiar with it. And propanadiol, on the other hand, is a glycol. So it enhances the absorption of ingredients and it's well tolerated amongst a lot of different skins. Again, I like the fact that Drunk Elephant is looking at ingredients that are suitable for all skin types, keeping in line with their whole idea of all skin is skin. And when I first tried it out, I immediately pit it against my favorite sleeping mask, which is the Laneige sleeping mask because that is my holy grail oh my god every time I use it the next morning I can feel a difference and I can feel when I don't use it so I wanted to put this to the test and see how they differ so looking at them you can already see that there's quite a big difference the Laneige one is a lot more water gel based it's clear for the water facial on the other hand I would say it's more on the moisturizing side it's a little bit more viscous a little more cream like than the gel watery type if you have like dry really parched, like dehydrated skin, this would be a really good option for you. It's definitely richer as well. So I think for aging skin, if you want something a little bit more heavy duty than the water sleeping mask, this might actually do it. Like this might actually be it. Like if you don't feel any effects from the Laneige, like maybe you want to try this because this really does give a more emollient, a more like rich, blended, like sink into your skin kind of feel. So even though it is so rich and filled with like five different kinds of ceramides, which I said is difficult to blend like usually, this is actually super blendable and a little bit goes a very long way. And again, the packaging, there's like a little nubbin here that you can cap if you're traveling, but you can just leave it like this and then you can just squeeze whenever you want and then you can just apply it onto your face. And I feel like it does blend very well with the moisturizer that I'm currently using also because they share a lot of common ingredients. And funny enough, I don't actually notice the vitamin F beads. I wish I did, honestly. It sounds like it's gonna be fun, but 
maybe I'm not paying like attention or maybe they are just so subtle and maybe they're already bursting by the time I apply it on my skin. So I do like this product a lot. I think it stands up to its claims. I think it works. But I just don't know if I like this more than the Laneige, especially because this is a little bit more expensive. This is a 50ml bottle and it retails for $74. So I just don't know if I would convert to this and repurchase this instead of the Laneige one. Uh, yeah, but I'm definitely going to use it up because I like it. So yeah. Alright, last but not least, the namesake of Drunk Elephant. This is the Virgin Marula Luxury Facial Oil. So if you guys don't know, there's a funny story behind the name of Drunk Elephant. So the founder, Tiffany Masterson, actually got the inspiration for the name Drunk Elephant when she discovered, like, you know, the wonders of Marula oil. And there's this, like, myth that uh, elephants like to get drunk on Marula oil. So she thought it was funny, it was cheeky, and it sort of went with the whole line, right? So... That's the name of Drunk Elephant. And I do have to say, dang, this is not just marula oil, okay? It is straight from the pit of the marula fruit and untouched by chemicals and fragrances. A raw cold press extraction and filtration process results in the purest and most concentrated form of the oil. So the first time I saw this like virgin marula oil from Drunk Elephant, I was like shocked because this retails for $102 for 30ml. And I actually have the marula oil from The Ordinary and that cost me like I think $17, $18. So I was like, why is there such a big difference. Why is this like five times the price, right? So that's the reason why. The method of extraction, the processing, the, well, the lack of processing rather, is what results in it being so concentrated and so full of nutrients and uh, to have all the fatty acids preserved and stuff. So this is truly a luxury facial oil and if you're interested in the texture between the one from The Ordinary and the one from Drunk Elephant is that this is a little bit lighter and more viscous but still very spreadable and it's definitely an oil so it's nothing like a dry oil or nothing that feels like tacky right after it's a very emollient like oily oil. As compared to the Marula oil from The Ordinary I feel like that one's a little bit more dank um, I don't think it's processed and like extracted the same way as this one is because you know they really hype this up so it must be like super up there, right? So that one's not a bad oil, it's just that it's probably gone through some processing and it's not as good of a quality as this. But then again, like five times the price, dude, I was like, whoa. That's the main difference if you're curious. I love facial oils. I feel like my skincare routine has really like leveled up the moment I started incorporating facial oils. I know a lot of oily girls like myself in the past, I was really scared of them because I was like, why would I want to add oil to my oily face? But it's like you add oil so that your face doesn't produce oil habitually to sort of like keep up with the whole like oil water balance on your face. That's how I kind of see it and oils are so good at moisturizing and really creating a nicer glowier complexion and really softening your skin as well. So I really love facial oils. I use this actually pretty regularly. I wouldn't say that I use this every single time I use every other ingredient. I definitely don't use this in the day because I do like to put on facial oil when I'm sort of sleeping and it helps like really seal everything in and it's also very soothing and like I said you can always pair this with the moisturizer. I will squeeze a little bit so that there's a little like flower, a little flower of moisturizer ready for me to use and then I drop on the side and then I sort of mix it in and then I apply it straight to my face and it is beautiful. My skin is so soft and so glowy and so nice and it's not at all excessively oily as you can tell on my face so I really love it but do I love the price tag? Ooh, hard to say. Really hard to say. I probably, because a little bit goes such a long way and I literally use one to two drops every time and the way that this is packaged, I know it seems like very normal, you know, dropper, sanitary, that's good. Um, it looks very normal by itself but actually there is like a catch-all sort of system to help you get like every last drop so that you don't like waste it or you don't start doing this after a while. But to be honest, I don't know if this Virgin Marula Luxury Facial Oil is really irreplaceable when it comes to facial oils because I do have rosehip oil, I have tamanu oil, I have um, marula oil. So I would really consider this like a luxury splurge. If you want the best of the best, it's really like a very pure oil kind of experience. Then I would say like, you know, you can get this. If it ever comes in like a nice Christmas set, it comes with like the other stuff, then I would definitely say go for it. But I just don't know if I can like wholeheartedly recommend 
and oil for $102 when the same marula oil can be found, maybe not as good quality, but can be also found for like 20 bucks. So yeah. I hope you guys don't find it like offensive that I am giving these products like a more harsher eye because when it comes to stuff like The Ordinary, when it comes to stuff like COSRX, they are affordable products so I can very easily recommend them to you and be like, hey, you know, it's 20 bucks, like if you want to try it, go and try it. I think it worked for me in these ways but I just don't feel like I can do the same for Drunk Elephant because of the premium price tag. I feel like when I want to pay a certain amount, if I want to drop $100, it could be on five different skincare products from the other line or it could be one product from this line. So I have to make sure that that one product is really worth my money, it's really worth my time. So yeah, I hope that makes a lot of sense. So after using Drunk Elephant almost exclusively for two months now, I have to say I still have a very good impression of the brand. I think they really stuck true to their philosophy. I noticed a lot of the ingredients are meant for all skin types. Even if I myself don't necessarily believe that like all skin is skin, there's no such thing as like skin types. I think there are such things as like skin concerns and that's how we get moved into our different skin types. But I do 100% agree that skin is skin and it will change and you'll have different concerns. And so in a way, all skin is kind of skin because you'll get like different concerns along the way and your skin will change and your biology will change. And I also like that the products in the line are all very harmonious. So you can pair the all of the moisturizer. You can pair like the shot of the B Hydra serum with anything else. I like that it's sort of like building blocks like that. But like I said, with the serums with like active ingredients, I would not recommend recommend you mixing these two together. I think uh, they should make that a little bit clearer because they do really do this whole like you can mix everything together like nothing will ever clash. So um, that's something that I wish they were a little bit more transparent about. But in general, I really like how it's very targeted towards the consumer's needs. I think the user experience of using these things, I feel very good. It's like very pretty to look at and the packaging is done so instinctively, intuitively. They really listen to what the consumer wants you know i want my product to be fresh to be clean you know to be hands-free to be cute and i think that it really checks all of the boxes it's really great packaging and i think that's what gives it its premium price tag also because definitely all of this packaging is unique to drunk elephant these are like custom made probably patented i don't know so i see the research i see the development like i see the innovative like aspect of it i really enjoy it the only thing is it is sort of outside of a lot of people's budgets so that's something to keep in mind but if you do have the budget and you want to try these out i hope my review was at least a little bit helpful if you have used any of these products before or if you have other recommendations from the rest of the line that you want to recommend me to try you can leave them down below in the comments but if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up let me know i don't really that often do like skincare reviews because these are very like research heavy so if you give me a thumbs up then i'll be able to see that you actually like it and you want more and i'll be able to make more let me know any other brands you might want me to review as well or take a look at and if you want to see more from me don't forget to subscribe i make new videos every week so don't forget to also turn on the bell so that you'll get notified when i make a new video and i'll see you guys really soon next week maybe i don't know i don't know all right bye